Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Yeah, it's Tuesday, November the 29th, 2011, episode number 219. Nice to have you here. My name is Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Hillary Rumble. Greetings, everyone. Hey, Hill. Nice to see you. Thanks. Good to be here. Good yeah. to be back. Having a good week? Oh, yeah. Keeping it real, you know. Good, good. Just doing my thing. Doing a thing. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> hey, Dave. Hey, everybody in the chat room. Hello, world. Nice to see everybody. Thanks for joining us. What do we got coming up in the news? Oh, you better believe there is lots happening in the world of news, lots. people. Stick around, because coming up in the newsroom, we're all familiar with viral video. But a new Brunswick man's Kijiji has gone viral, and we'll tell you why. We're also going to take a look at a starfish-inspired robot that can squeeze its way through tight spaces. Sweet. Anything to do with robots. Ooh. Computer lessons in the UK and beyond are terribly obsolete. The British Library is digitizing newspapers from the 18th and 19th centuries. Kind of cool. And lastly, Black Friday online sales were 26% higher this year. Stick around because these stories are coming up later in the show. Wow. Sounds huge. Lots going on in the news, hey, people. Don't forget, if you've got a mobile device, you can check us out at mobile.cat5.tv. Just scan that code there, and uh, you'll be able to launch our uh, mobile website. Very cool stuff. Uh, we try to make it compatible with every device, but in particular, if you're on an iOS device, you're going to be able to actually stream that show live to your uh, to your device. Uh, but either way, you're going to be mm -hmm. able to actually watch the show through your mobile device. Very cool stuff. And it's a good way to catch Category 5 uh, in a portable format. So mobile.cat5.tv. Uh, tonight, uh, we are going to be joined by, uh, by Sharon Ann Reynolds, who, who joins us from IamASmartKid.org. I'd encourage you to check them out. It's on our shirt, if you forget, any time throughout the show. <laughs> there you go. There it is. IamASmartKid.org. <laughs> uh, we're going to be chatting about that in just a few minutes. Uh, also... Uh, we've got lots of viewer questions, a couple mm -hmm. of viewer testimonials. Uh, I got a nice uh, note from Sammy Says who mentioned that uh, stuff worked really, really well uh, when we answered their question last week. So very Sweet. cool stuff. Uh, and uh, beyond that, yeah, good opportunity for you to get your questions in. If you've got some tech questions, yeah, join us in the chat room, category5.tv. Uh, you'll see the link there. If you're on free node, it's uh, pound sign, the little number <laughs> sign, category5. And uh, you can join us right there in the live chat room. And also uh, email us live at category5.tv, and that goes over to Hillary. Cool. Better believe it. Uh, so we will, uh, we will be right back with you after this, but make sure you get your questions in in the chat room. Say hi. Uh, it's nice to see everybody joining us there. Whether hitting the road or the dusty trails, Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point-of-view HD video camera built directly into a high-quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high definition video with a high quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com
Welcome back, everyone. Here we are with our new friend, Sharon Ann Reynolds from IamASmartKid.org. Now, that video you saw just um, just now was from her website, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about her agency and what she believes in. Hi, Sharon. Thanks for Hi. being with us. Thanks for having me on Category 5, guys. Oh, we are thrilled. This is something like we need to think more about. Um, cyberbullying and then how that plays out, um, especially in such a technologically savvy culture that we live in. Our kids are consumed with it. They, uh, it's at their fingertips every minute of every day. They can't get away from it anymore. So it's just basically teaching them how to be smart online, give them the opportunity to be creative and free, but mm -hmm. not the, at the expense of other people. For sure. Now, could you maybe take us back to your to your beginnings of this? Like, what prompted you? To start I am a smart kid dot org. Um, I started I am a smart kid last year after my son was attacked and beaten and it was filmed and put on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So there a, after it happened I didn't get any help from anybody. Nobody could help us get it offline. They told me it would be there forever. I was not okay with that and word got around and someone did help me get it offline and mm. uh, I now devote myself to helping people have other things removed from online. I basically teach kids to create and maintain positive online profiles and um, I give them the tools that they need to successfully deal and cope with bullying. Wow, that that is unbelievable. It's like such a terrible personal experience but you know, motivated you to, to help others so they never have to go through what your family went it through. It was devastating. It was, it was just devastating because there was no help available. Um, people made me feel that um, it wasn't a big deal. And it is a big deal because, you know, we're taught that once something's online, it's on there forever. And, and people don't really think about how one little sentence or one word or one video can be detrimental for somebody else or for even their own like the rest of their life yep we have children that are killing themselves over being bullied and cyberbullying, and um, that's unacceptable now could you maybe discuss a little bit about cyberbullying as like a whole concept and what does that entail fully like the the spectrum of cyberbullying? there's it's there's so much I and mean, maybe we don't realize um that our little tweet could be actually a form of bullying. yes you you don't realize and that's the thing um basically cyberbullying is the repetitive targeting of an individual or a group um that's basically what it is but there are many other forms that don't fall under that mm -hmm. exact category like something you say something like a picture you take of somebody that you know if they don't have you don't have their permission to put it up there then that is also a form of bullying mm -hmm. so it's 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 a very big spectrum, but it's there, yeah. So would you say like if somebody posts something on Facebook and that makes you uncomfortable, anything that makes you feel uncomfortable or is offensive to you would be classified it, as as bullying? Yeah. If you're targeting somebody and you're doing something to hurt someone and you know what you're posting is going to hurt that person, then that is a form of cyberbullying for sure. Hmm. And I think people just really aren't aware of of what cyberbullying is. And especially in our society, we are, you know, often typically very hyper aware in the workplace of anything you say being taken as harassment or abuse. But um, maybe people aren't guarding their thoughts online as much um, or censoring yourself online. And uh, it's so easy just to get caught up in that cycle of just posting your, your quick thoughts and your then thoughts. I, I think sometimes people get caught up in thinking that it's freedom of speech and so yep. it becomes a case of well is this free speech or is this actually am I actually hurting someone yeah so, uh, cyberbullying differ from just going online and, and saying something that uh, you know may be offensive to somebody or well, what it comes down to basically is you are personally liable for anything that you post online. Mm -hmm. So the ramifications of what you're posting online can haunt you today, tomorrow, a week later. It depends on all who you're targeting. So if you have something bad to say about somebody, I would really caution you and taking at least the five seconds to proofread and reread what you're 
mm-hmm. what you do mm-hmm. want to post. Sometimes online something can come across wrong too because you say something and you've got that tongue in cheek kind of expression as you're saying it, but the the end user reading it may not even interpret it that exactly. way. Exactly. Everybody which takes is, everything differently. And that can be dangerous, I think. Much so. And yeah. also that when you're looking at a computer screen there's there's no face there, so you're not seeing the reaction of anybody else or how everybody else is feeling mm-hmm. in regards to what you're going to post. So when there's no one there to caution you or, or give you the guidance or or anything, that, that that's more dangerous too because it enables you to, well, keep going. Dman810 in the chat room says exactly that, that text can be taken so wrong because there's no emotion mm-hmm. when you're just reading something on your screen. That's right. And these days, you've got Twitter, you've got Facebook, but Twitter in particular with microblogging, you've got 140 characters. To so how easy is it to leave out a couple of emoticons just for the sake of the fact that, hey, I need those I need extra those, four characters, right? I need right? those extra yeah. four spaces, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is, yeah, it's, oh my goodness. You just don't realize. You really just... People, people aren't aware. And so with your website and, and your whole organization, what are, you, what are your main goals and objectives in educating people? Well, SMART is the acronym for Social Media Awareness and Responsibility Team. What SMART does is we basically, we help kids create and maintain positive online profiles and we give them the tools that they need to deal and cope with bullying. Um, hmm. there's a, we have um, open workshops for kids to uh, teach them how to use the social media feeds properly. Uh, we have a support group for, for the bully, the bullied, and the bystander. Mm-hmm. And uh, we believe that uh, integrating these kids all together and giving them the opportunities to speak one another and see how things are affecting each of them, that uh, they have the opportunity to learn from one another. And I think that's so important, especially in these very, very, very public forums, um, mm. in particular for the bystander. How problematic is that when we, we can, everyone on your friend list on, on Facebook or, or anyone following you on Twitter can can see this and perhaps just turn, to, turn a blind eye to it because anyone's a bystander if you're connected to them in yeah. these forums. I think my thought, too, is that a lot of people are using aliases. I mean, I'm looking at the chat room, and old guy Jim is there. Yeah. And guest 5608 is wondering, <laughs> you know, when did you start the the, the group? I am a smart kid dot org, and uh, we've got Agamotto there, and we've got uh, Idle Chatter is joining us in the chat room as well. So, uh, when you're carrying a name like that, people don't recognize you. You feel like there's a little bit of extra freedom to say things that maybe you wouldn't say to somebody in person. Uh, referring back to old guy Jim's comment about, you know, just having uh, kindness when, when you're talking to people, not only in person, but in, uh, on, on the web as well. A smile goes a long way. <laughs> a, or a, a smiley. Yeah. Or a, yeah, <laughs> Definitely. a smiley face. But that's a thing, like the anonymity of the internet is, is problematic in that. Like, yeah, people can hide behind it, and maybe that's why people don't, uh, don't think about what they're saying, because they've got like, you know, this kind of avatar and, or fake name to hide behind. There's no like accountability in that sense, really. But it goes with everybody, too. Um, if the adults are showing the kids to be accountable for their own mm-hmm. behavior, then it's easier for the kids to be accountable. So it's, you know, it's hard for the kids. I I, I feel bad for kids nowadays. I wouldn't want to be a teenager again, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're just, they're over-consumed. They're over-consumed with, with technology. And, um, you know, we throw all this stuff at them, but no one's out there teaching them how to properly use it. And uh, that's a big thing. Uh, it's the modern form of passing notes, right? Yeah. I mean, dee, 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 and all of a sudden <laughs> your your buzzer goes off, and you know you're in the middle of working on a test or something, and you pull it out, and oh, it's somebody saying something nasty to me. Yeah. It can be you know detrimental to schooling and everything. It's so, no, yeah. It's as no a longer confined to the schoolyard, it follows yeah, them everywhere they go. Exactly. What uh, as as a parent, what mm-hmm. can we do? Uh, now, my kids are quite young, but what can we do? Uh, you know, I do have the concern that as, uh, especially my daughter who's in, in school now, and, and, you know, you start to, she starts to come home with new words that uh, we certainly didn't teach her. And so as she gets this generation, my daughter, six years old, is excellent at the computer, whereas previous generation, you know, uh, I didn't even have a computer that was considered a computer at that time. Um, so uh, as a parent, what can we do? 
uh, be it through your organization or uh, or otherwise, what can we do to help protect our children? Well, first off and foremost, I think open communication is the best thing. Communicating with your kids and um, letting them know that you're there for them. We as parents for so long have told our kids, oh, don't be a tattletale, don't be a tattletale. <laughs> right. You know, kids, if they feel that they can't go to you because it's either you're not going to believe them or you don't want to hear about it, it's just always keeping the lines of communication open and letting their, your kids know that they can that they can come to you for anything. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big thing because, like, if kids are, you know, feeling targeted or they've seen something a little funky online that they don't agree with or doesn't doesn't really sit well with them, maybe they're afraid to tell their parents because, oh, no, mom's going to take my phone away. That's oh, of, that's, she's going to take my computer away. That's one yeah. of the biggest things. That's one of the biggest things why kids don't come forward is because mm-hmm. they're afraid that um, their social media tools will be taken from them. So and they don't want that happening. And, and that's probably mm-hmm. that's probably their connection to to their real friends as well. Exactly. Um, that's so. their connections. Period. Yeah. So yeah, it's like yeah, maybe yeah, kids just shut down in that sense. So yeah, definitely the lines of communication are crucial, and that open kind of open door policy with kids and parents. Yeah. So and and that way the parents are holding the kids accountable and kind of having that dialogue with them to you know just check in every now and then and see well who are you talking to i know my mom would always when i was on msn she'd be like oh who are, who are you talking to and i'd be like no one one thing cover the screen but get a facebook page and add your kids yeah if you're paying the bills in your house kids love that <laughs> you know what? i have a rule the rule is at my house as long as i'm on your page i promise you i won't comment or like anything <laughs> or post embarrassing no. photos from when you were a kid no, I would never do that so you know as long as I can see what's going on and I can see what they're doing then then we have a common understanding mm. Mm. I, I guess that would help you to protect them as well and exactly you can kind of talk to them if you see something that seems a little off yeah I would talk to them in person. <laughs> yes. Get, send them a message. Yeah. Yeah. A message. Tweet them. <laughs> Your Facebook looks funny. Okay. Um, wow. All right. Then, so you've talked a little bit about um, your uh, workshops that you offer. What else are, are you doing to help um, get the word out there to, to, you know, the bullied, the bystander, the bullies, the parents? Like, what, what else are you... Um, um, Bully Awareness Week just passed. Bully Awareness Week was November 13th and 19th. Um, we hosted many events throughout that week. Um, we just we just released our video. It was two days before Bully Awareness Week, mm-hmm. which is uh, a group joint venture with um, I'm a Smart Kid, Illustrated, and Unbelievers. Uh, we all came together and uh, created this video, which was fantastic. Um, last year, we did the pink T-shirt event <laughs> at City Hall mm-hmm. in Barrie. Excellent. And, uh, we're just working jointly with other organizations in town um, just to help kids and make them more aware and uh, hopefully more responsible for their behavior. When you say in town, uh, Sharon Sorry, Anna, in is, <laughs> and is this available to international uh, users as well? Most definitely. Yeah. Yep. And, and that's fabulous because I know you will be launching a blog soon. Yep. Our, our blog will be launched uh, during the Christmas holidays. And... Uh, you know, we are we are a local organization with hopes of going national and international. Um, if there's anybody out there that would like to start a smart uh, group in your town or city, I can help you do that. Mm-hmm. That would be uh, terrific. Cool. It's just bringing awareness and just being an advocate for kids and families in your community, bringing mm-hmm. awareness to uh, stories, highlighting stories in your own community that um, you think need to be made aware and people need to learn from. It's true. Like you were just on the local news in, in our town, Barry, um, last week. Yeah. Um, discussing a tragic, terrible story that happened to um, a young family, and the, the young girl ended up taking her own life as a result of torment and cyberbullying. And it just stuff like that shouldn't happen. It People really should shouldn't. not have the power to make somebody else feel as if they have to take their own life because it's an it's unescapable. It's it's you devaluation know, to the point where you have no self worth. It's and to in, receive in the last that. three months, um, in a five hour radius of Barry, there have been six children that we know of that have taken their lives to cyberbullying. The youngest being eleven, the oldest being sixteen. Oh my goodness. 
that's that's, that's unacceptable. frightening yeah it's very frightening mm-hmm. so and i notice in in your music video that one of the stats is surprising that many of these kids and a majority of these kids don't talk to their parents don't talk to anybody about what's happening and in fact the the girl who who just recently lost her life um everyone thought she was fine everyone thought that she was dealing with it uh and able to you know it's oh it's nothing don't worry about it i'm fine um so what uh you know what what can kids do to support their Mm -hmm. peers what can um standing up stand up for the kid being bullied that uh whose voice is not being heard um it's 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 just it's very hard for them and like you guys talk about abort support and report maybe you can discuss that in terms of of kids you know having the nerve to you know report it on facebook but also what take a step further than that go to go to a parent go to a teacher go to the police um the abort support report uh thing is abort what you're doing support give it or get Mm -hmm. it report it immediately that's what we teach all kids Um, If there's something that makes you feel uncomfortable and you know is wrong, either by you seeing it or posting it or you Mm -hmm. being the target, um, we highly suggest you aborting, supporting, and reporting. It's very simple to do. And so, like, the protocol, like, for reporting, let's say, like, a kid's like, oh, no, I have no one to talk to. Like, are there other... um, like forums for things like this that you know of? All the sites now have, like Facebook is upgraded where you can report a post Mm -hmm. and say this person is bullying me or this person is harassing me. And does that ever come back to the user? Um, To the user? Yeah. Um, As I would imagine the kid getting bullied, the fear would be if I report them, it's just like the tattletale, right? No, exactly. Is that a fear that kids would, and I think it's a justifiable fear. That's why a lot of kids don't report it, but that's where the parents come in and Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to be extra cautious you know you have to understand that a lot of parents work two jobs Mm -hmm. and you know they're double working families now and right it's just it's making time for your kids and just letting them know that you're there for them and that they can come to you with anything that's the most important thing that is huge it is huge so another well a huge part of your organization um has been to develop a pledge yes for individuals to take and to take a stand furthermore um do you want to elaborate on that a little bit sure um it's just a pledge that uh, we encourage all kids to take actually we encourage parents to sit down with their kids and take the pledge Mm -hmm. with their children and it's just you committing to yourself and to others that you're not going to participate in these behaviors and that you're going to stand up for kids when you do see these behaviors going on so and that's that's the main thing okay and how would people go about um accessing accessing this this pledge and also your website um things on it that you would like people to know about okay our website www.imasmartkid.org it's a we still have a lot of work to do with it it is a work in progress um but uh it's an interactive website where you can watch our video, you can go to our pledge page, and it's a downloadable PDF that you can actually print off and share with your family or your kids, your aunts, your uncles, give it to a teacher to share with their kids in school. Um, and it's just a personal commitment that you're making to yourself and to the world online that um, you are promising not to contribute to um, the world of cyberbullying. That's terrific. No. I think that's important. Yeah, mm. I think uh, you know. I think about our viewer base, and and I uh, wonder if perhaps there are some viewers uh, who are watching who are either a victim of cyberbullying or perhaps on the other end where maybe you've said some things to people um, that maybe you regret, maybe you don't even realize has uh, has affected them and has actually become uh, a, a, a form of bullying. It's called cyberbullying, but really all it is is just. A, things have changed because of technology technology. because of the fact that we can now be sitting anywhere and be sending messages and and uh posting embarrassing pictures and and whatever else and and uh what would you say to to those people uh, in all kindness just what because i i don't think every i i think uh, at our heart uh, everyone's everyone wants to be a nice person to other Mm, people of course and wants to be respected and you know etiquette 
it's yeah. etiquette on and offline it's um, treating people how you want to be treated um, really thinking about what you're posting before you're posting take taking those extra couple of seconds to reread it and uh, you know don't post anything out of anger calm yourself down before you post anything there's lots of steps that you can take personally to be very conscientious of what you're posting and who you're posting it in regards to I think because people just don't think about the ramifications or the consequences because you think oh it's online it's not like I was angry and I punched someone in the face Mm -hmm. or I was angry and I did this or that like you think it's a subtle I don't wait that's at the low end of the scale yeah that's very low end like it's not posting a a heinous video of somebody being beaten Mm -hmm. like and so I just mm, well a hundred could kids stood there and watched it's unbelievable and then that's evidence of the kids who just stood back and did nothing so could you not be one of the kids that stands up and says hey this isn't right go get a teacher go Go get get whatever there's got to be something that Mm -hmm. can be done yep unbelievable my goodness kids have the power it's just giving the kids the confidence to understand that power Mm -hmm. you know it's hard to be a kid nowadays it really is in it yeah um, i agree it's, uh, I feel bad for them because there's a lot of pressures on our kids nowadays and, uh, you know, for the latest and greatest tech gadgets and, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, the, the cool factor, it's, it's all of it. So it's just, just the confidence to stand up for what you know is right and be your own person and not get, you know, kind of sucked in the, the, the world of not thinking for yourself. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Agamotto wants to know if, uh, being that it's technology based, is are are these people that are cyberbullying are they being prosecuted? Um, yes, there are laws that protect our kids from uh, cyberbullying. Um, you are liable for what you post online, and if your child is posting things online, um, the parents are actually liable as well. So, there are ways for like there's criminal charges. Um, you can be um, civilly liable. You can be sued. So, you know, there there are big time ramifications of stuff that's happening. So the so. law is taking this seriously. Mm-hmm. Oh, the law is taking it very seriously. Good. And I think it maybe even in some ways cyberbullying is is worse than other forms of bullying because there's a record of it. There's documentation. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's constant not, proof. Constant proof, and exactly. So what would you suggest to people? Um, let's say somebody posted something nasty about me on Facebook and I wanted evidence of that or a threat or a death threat or whatever. Like, what do you suggest a people copy. do? Most definitely print the page, print a copy of it, and uh, save a copy for your records. You know, that's proof right there. So all service providers have um, agreements that we sign um for using their services mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so if they're going about doing these behaviors they can be kicked off of those services if you bring it to the attention of those service mm-hmm. providers okay so so again as parents I think it's important for us to understand technologically how do we print the pages how do we take a screenshot that we can email to local authorities yep. um, with Mac you understand the Mac better than I do how, how that works with the with the PC pretty much the print screen button print screen print screen on your computer yeah. and With then paste Mac, that into an email control alt 4 and then it gives you the option to um, take a picture of the actual screen okay and you can print it off that way it actually right. goes into your photo files very good yes well these are terrific um, things to remember for to protect yourself to protect people you love um, and to stand up for the people who are being bullied, whether it's a post or a picture or a tweet or a video or a text or a sext or what have you, um, definitely important things to keep in mind. That's exactly right. Um, and so you can check out you know, all of this information, everything we've discussed at IamASmartKid.org. And maybe what we can do is, together, we can all sign IamASmartKid.org pledge. Would you mind reading this out for no us? No problem. I am a smartkid.org. I pledge to be smart when using information and social media technologies. I am taking a stand against cyberbullying. I will abort when being cyberbullied. I will support others who are being bullied. I will not I will report cyberbullying when I'm aware of it. I will not join in cyber tactics to hurt others. I will be part of the solution and not part of the problem. I am a smart kid. 
That is terrific. Robbie and I are going to sign this, but we just want to thank Sharon Ann for coming and discussing this with us. And we and we really appreciate you taking the time to help educate um, all of our viewers and even myself a little bit more about cyberbullying and the implications of it and how prevalent it is and what we can do to help um, end it and spread awareness. So thank you for being here with us. Thanks so much Thanks for having me, you guys. I really appreciate it. And please check out IamASmartKid.org. Thank you. This episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by GardenGateFarms.com. And uh, you can visit them on their website for certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice. Also, check out Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. Uh, you'll be able to download the free online game there. And Pogo Plug, cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. That's the very cool device from Pogo Plug. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Sharon Ann. It's so nice to have you here. I know it's a sensitive topic, uh, and it's uh, even to some degree it's a heavy topic because we don't necessarily realize how serious of an issue this mm -hmm. is. But it's important for us too. And I think, uh, you know, if uh, as parents, I mean, I take the perspective of the parent. But if you have been a victim of cyberbullying, or if you're uh, being uh, abused by somebody online, it's it's important for you to know that there is help out there. I'm a smart kid org is uh, is one avenue that you can at least go and uh, communicate with them and find out what kind of help is available to you. Um, but just know that, uh, that you're not alone and that there are people that are uh, supporting you uh, through whatever it is that you're going through. So, very cool. You ready to sign? Oh yeah. I, I left my pen I'm over ready. in Studio B. I'm going to sign right now. All right. I, Hillary. I am a smart kid. Take the pledge. I am a smart kid. Hi. Right. Robbie Ferguson, make the pledge. Uh, you can actually download this pledge form right on uh, IamASmartKid.org. You can get the PDF file and uh, print that out for yourself, your kids. Uh, and and be, you know, be aware of what's out there and what's going on uh, in your kids' lives. I, I think that stat just blows me away how few uh, people, uh, kids, talk to their parents about this mm -hmm. problem. And yet they're being cyber bullied. So it's important for us to uh, communicate with our kids. For just sure. like anything. So. For sure. Cool. And with that, uh, straight over into the newsroom. I know you've got lots of uh, great stories for us tonight. Oh, yes. Lots going on in the world of news. Dun, da, da, da. Here are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. A Moncton, New Brunswick man's ad for a snowblower went viral over the past week, netting him not only a sale, but job and date offers. Wei Ming Chow's 900-word manifesto on the attribute of, of the attributes of his snowblower, a machine of snow doom that will cut a 29-inch path of pure ecstasy, has been viewed about 360,000 times in less than a week. Mr. Cho writes, just plug in that sucker, push the button, and get ready to punch snow in the throat. <laughs> you give me some cold hard cash, I give you a machine that will mess up a snow bake, something fierce. That is very convincing, I think. <laughs> uh, he posted the ad Wednesday on the classified ad website Kijiji, hoping to score a prospective buyer, but since has received over 1,400 emails, including job oh. offers, requests for him to write ads, some date requests, and even marriage proposals, wow. but also a few interested buyers in the actual snowblower. <laughs> I wanted to kind of set my ad apart, uh, if I could. I really did something, I really did that better than I thought I could, he said on Friday, standing outside his home with a fresh coat of snow on his lawn. A soft robot inspired by squid and starfish can crawl, undulate, and squeeze under obstacles. Built by a team at Harvard University, this robot has several advantages over those with treads, wheels, and rigid parts, which have a limited repertoire of movements and may have trouble navigating difficult terrain. The creator of the robot built an obstacle course which, they say, would hinder some rigid uh, metallic robots. The flexible robot was made to squeeze underneath a glass plate elevated just two centimeters above the ground in less than a minute by executing a combination of coordinated movements. The sea creature-inspired creation was manufactured with soft materials and its motion is driven by compressed air. It looks like it tickles. It's kind of weird looking. <laughs> um, apparently, Canada is not alone. In the UK, the government warned yesterday that computer lessons are out of date and too, e too easy to do in the English schools. 
Google's chairman, Eric Schmidt, said in August he was flabbergasted that computer science was not taught as standard in UK schools. The Department for Culture, Media and Sport said yesterday that classes in computing, known as Information and Communication Technology, or ICT, are insufficiently rigorous and in need of reform. The warning came as a part of the government's response to an independent review into how the UK can become the world's leading hub for video games and visual effects companies. Interesting, eh? Very interesting. I mean, I, I think about all the web design classes. I mean, I'm a web programmer, right? But these web design mm-hmm. classes, and I do the quotes. Because <laughs> everybody's learning to use yeah, a Weiss well, Wig editor, and nobody's learning code. And mm-hmm. with computers, everybody's learning how to use a word processor or a spreadsheet, but not computer science. It's true. And it's a dangerous thing. Very dangerous interesting. Thing. That's my two cents. <laughs> Four million pages of newspapers from the 18th and 19th centuries have been made available online by the British Library. The public will now be able to view the content of 200 titles from around Britain and Ireland. These will include historic events, such as the wedding of Victoria and Albert, and the rise of the railways. Ed King, the British Library's head of newspapers, said it opened up the collection as never before. The archive is free to search, but there is a charge for accessing the pages themselves. A team has spent a year at the British, uh, the British Library's newspaper library at Collendale in North London, uh, digitizing up to 8,000 pages a day. Whoa. They expect to scan up to 40 million pages over the next 10 years. Fantastic. You know what I'm thinking? For the first time in recorded history, newspapers are susceptible to electromagnetic pulse. Hmm. Interesting. (laughs) The newspapers could crash. Who knows? Yes. Pretty wild stuff. Speaking of wild stuff, Black Friday online sales in the United States are up this year by over 26%. Overall, e-commerce sites closed last year uh, more than 815, whoa, 815.8 million dollars worth of sales on Friday compared to only 648 million last year. That's it? Oh, kind of a big deal. Uh, by a wide margin, Amazon led with 50% <laughs> more bargain hunters than any other website, followed by Walmart, Best Buy, Target, and then Apple. In total, a little over 50 million Americans went shopping online Black Friday. That number is up 35% from last year's levels. Black Friday is the traditional kickoff to the Christmas and holiday season um, shopping in the U.S. As the day after Thanksgiving, people are frequently off work and retailers also lay on a load of great bargains and more discounts, making it one of the busiest shopping days of the year. And I can attest to that because I've done it before and it's crazy. You can get these full stories online at Category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash and Simple10 with contributions from our awesome community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of honor mention, send us an email at newsroom at Category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Thanks, Hill. Did you do any online shopping for... Black Friday? I did a little bit. Cyber Monday? Cyber did Monday? You? A little bit. Um, I, I, uh, I have gone. They were done expecting the crazy thing that it was going to go down. But here's the my site story. The would crash? No, no, no not like the that. The world Sorry. internet would crash because of all the yes. sales? We Googled Google <laughs> and the internet crashed. Oy. Um, no, but uh, what ended up happening to me is I, I went into the store mm-hmm. for the Black Friday yeah, sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And they told me at, at the at the checkout or whatever that uh, people had lined up at one o'clock in the morning to <laughs> oh. get into the store for these deals. I believe it. It doesn't open till seven. Got to get your spot. But still, people are lined up <laughs> and at one o'clock in the morning. So they were sold out of the particular item that I was looking for. We needed to get Liam is getting big, and we need to get a, a back facing toddler oh, seat yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing mm-hmm. for the car. And they were sold out. So do you do rain checks? No, we don't do rain checks because it's Black Friday, <laughs> right. right? So, but it's a great deal. It's half price. <laughs> it's less than half price. What did I do? I went to their website that afternoon, and it was on their website at the Black Friday price. And oh. I said, "What were you doing, lining up at one o'clock in the That's morning?" That's pretty crazy. I ordered it off of the website, less than half price. Hmm. Paid ten dollars shipping. So you're still getting a deal. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. Oh, Robbie, smarter than the average bear. Well, it's that's that's what it, this is the thing though is that as 
online retail mm-hmm. or, or e-tail uh, becomes easier and easier and easier, and the sales start to transcend retail and become available online, uh, it it's so convenient. It's changing the entire way we shop. Oh, it's so easy. And, and the big players, uh, I think about Amazon, uh, Amazon and, and how much they must ship mm-hmm. and the fact that because they've got such relationships with the uh, with the shipping people, companies, whatever shipping companies that they use, it, it's like free shipping, no matter uh, where. Yeah, I just bought a bunch of stuff, and if you spend over twenty five dollars, it's free shipping. Yeah, and they're not the only ones. No, but it's like what's lots to, of people do. So what's that going to do to retail? It's pretty wild. I'd never have to. People won't leave, leave, the, leave house. the house if my internet's down. Then I got to go to the store. That's well, how that archaic. Would be ridiculous. No, because <laughs> then I've got three G. You know, so I can just do it on my phone. <laughs> totally true i've got a viewer testimonial here uh, came in from invincible mutant who Ooh. says hey robbie and adorable friends ah, adorable you must be the adorable friend ah. first of all i thought of sending robbie a private message thanking him for his help <laughs> on episode number 218 with my questions uh, but uh, krista and the co-hosts also deserve credit and appreciation from us for oh, reading nice. our questions out credits uh oh pardon me uh, therefore here you go with another <laughs> testimonial for the Category 5.TV crew. Thank you very much for the great work and the help. I feel like I am at home watching Category 5.TV. You probably oh. are at home. But it's possible also, you're on it. But also at home. Oh, at home in your heart. Not just at home on your couch. Okay. <laughs> Both. 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 Uh, besides credits, uh, also go out to the Category 5.TV chat room. Kudos chat room. Uh, Invincible Mutant wants you to know that uh, they appreciate you giving them quick help with Mm -hmm. their questions from time to time. And then Invincible Mutant ends the testimonial by saying, guys, keep it up. Thanks, Invincible Mutant. Thank you. Always a pleasure to have you here. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I love getting viewer testimonials. You can send us yours. Go to our website, category5.tv. Click on interact, and you'll see uh, the viewer testimonials menu there. Be able to submit your own. We'd love to receive them. We do. We love to hear from you. Hmm. No doubt about it. Well, you've sent in a couple of your questions this week. A couple. Well, <laughs> slight yeah. under exaggeration. Uh, but we will try to get to your viewer question tonight. And uh, if not, uh, do let us know. But uh, if you have a question for us live at category5.tv, and of course our beautiful chat room, as Invincible Mutant was saying, nice to see everybody. Lots of people joining us in the chat room there. Uh, Blogique, uh, Cable 101, Chris Reich. I gotta go. I gotta leap down to the because it's alphabetical, right? Yes. Yes. So yes. if you are Valpin one, <laughs> it's it's. Your way at the bottom. It takes me a while to get to you. <laughs> but but we hey, Scorpio fifty five. <laughs> Sock of red. I like that. Nice to have Sock you here, Steve five, R F bomb, R D Blair. Always a pleasure. Welcome. I can't. I obviously can't say hi to everybody that's in the chat room, but greetings to you. We've got several guests there as well. Joining us uh, possibly for the first time. Anybody uh, joining us for the first time tonight? We'd love to hear from you. Mm-hmm. Maybe private message me if you're joining me for the first time tonight. Uh, PM Robbie F. And uh, that way I'll make sure that uh, we get to say greets to you as we go into viewer questions. But uh, you can also send us your questions in the chat room there. Like Harry. Harry's brand new. Hey, Harry. So thank you. PM me. Let me know where you're <laughs> from. A PM is double click on my name in the chat room. Private message. Um, I'd love to know where you're from. If you're new, PM me where you're from, how many times you've watched. Rochester, New York. Ooh, hey, cool. Harry. Nice to have you here. Welcome, welcome. All right. I'll watch for your PMs. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And let's just pitter-patter and get at her and go to our first question of the evening. John Zimmerman writes to hey, us. Um, maybe I am going at this the wrong way, but all I'm trying to do is have a nice... 2T external drive next to my Linux Pingai OS desktop computer and have a perfect copy replica mirror of the contents moved over from my free NAS 7 hard drive. But everything I've tried, Unison, Lucky Backup, R-Sync, it won't work. As I write this, I'm trying to figure out why I really needed this external hard drive attached to my computer rather than make it a part of my NAS. It's because I can't get Picasa to link to pictures on the NAS. Anyone who knows how to Mm. do that, let us know. The other reason was I wanted um, a redundancy of that drive and a and sure. a backup drive. And I can't figure out how to start it up with RAID 1 um, with the two drives, um, if only one of the drives already has that on it. Mm-hmm. I have nowhere to send this 1.5 
terabytes, I guess, of data to, uh, he's nowhere to send it while he's setting up the RAID 1 with the two drives. Mm. Any thoughts? Yeah, I've had that scenario happen, not uh, any time recently, but back when I was doing mm. music production uh, in a home studio, we had our computer and it was just jam-packed with music. And these are big files, yeah, like yeah. FL Studio zip files with all the wave files, lossless, everything. And I needed to upgrade the hard drive in the computer. So what I did is I moved everything off onto another drive and then I reformatted and little did I know that that drive mm. that I moved it off to was bad Ooh. or becoming bad and failed on no. me. So I ended up losing a lot of stuff. Force. So the dangers that you run, like you're mentioning about switching over to a RAID 1 for the redundancy, that's important. RAID 1 is when you have two identical hard drives mm -hmm. in a device, NASA's network attached storage. That's what, what they're using. So in this device, so as I save a file, normally it saves it on a hard drive, and if that hard drive crashes, guess what? You've lost it. Yeah. This saves it to two hard drives. It's called a mirror, RAID 1, so it's always in two places. This one crashes, this one's still okay. You put in another one and it rebuilds, and now you've got two copies hmm. again. So it's a real good safety mechanism. But the problem is, you've got all your data on it. Where are you going to mm. put that data if you were to set up a RAID 1? So my suggestion in that scenario is don't try to do that. You're, it's too risky. Right now you've got it on a drive that you know is working. So your better bet is to build a RAID 1 with a couple of 2 terabyte drives if that's the route you want to go. Build that as your RAID 1. Then take that 1.5 terabyte, copy everything over. Don't move it. Copy it. Verify the integrity of the copy once it's done. You can run an MD5 sum on a couple of the big files, a couple of ISO files or something like that. Compare it between the the RAID one and the uh, and the old pardon me the old drive, and then you're going to be able to see if it's identical, if it matches. If that's the case, then you can reuse that drive for whatever else, or use it as an external backup or something like that. But mm. uh, kind of a, a lengthy question with a, a couple of different yeah, directions yeah. to go there um, using. Ping iOS and trying to get stuff uh, to sync over to the f the free NAS drive. Um, I would think like the first thing I would look at is rsync and or rdiff or something along those lines. So I'd want you to determine or let me know what when you say it didn't work to use rsync. What what's the problem? Rsync or rdiff, which is based on rsync, are fantastic because it's going to look through the files basically and basically back up anything that has not already been backed up. Or you can create um, snapshot-style backups where you can actually go back in time over the course of you know, being able to, oh, well, let's recover the file from a week ago versus let's recover the file from six months ago and having the different data there. Hmm. So it's a good method to use. But essentially, you'd need your FreeNAS device to be mounted to that computer as an SSH drive would be the easiest way. Um, if that's the route you went and you still had trouble, then let me know. But I need to know more about what failed in yeah. order to know what, what we can do to, to get around that. But immediately, the, the crisis situation is you need to have all your data that's important to you in two places at all times. Always. Had a customer who had all their photos on their laptop. Mm -hmm. They bought an external hard drive to back up. They moved all their photos over to that external hard drive Ooh. instead of copying it. So it became the, oh, the, the, only, the sole yeah, yeah. copy. It's no longer on their laptop. That hard drive got accidentally reformatted no. and reused because it looked like a blank drive. Oh, so they no. had overwritten a lot of the sectors, which means they can't get their files back. Or another scenario is, well, someone could steal that. Yeah. Someone could steal it's your true. laptop. Where's mm -hmm. the other copy? You always want to have two copies. Yeah. Especially things like pictures, you know, because those are the memories of, you, of your lives. Everything's digital these days. Our, our video camera, when I do, you know, my son's first birthday was on uh, Friday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, great time. And, of course, there's Dad with his digital video camera. <laughs> it's M4V files. Where are they? How, how, how yeah. many copies do I have? Exactly. Just in case I have a crash. So, because that's the way everything is. Everything's my pictures, my still pictures. We don't have that big box of <laughs> 35 millimeter slides anymore. Yeah, you don't. So. The strips and negatives and yeah, no, you don't. Can't reprint unless you got the files. <laughs> True enough. Well, so. let us know how you make out this week and if yeah. you can provide further details, maybe we can help you out a little bit more. So that would be great. Thanks for the question. Mm -hmm. Our next question comes to us from dun, da, 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 Robert. 
Hey, Robert. Hi, I want to set up some IP cameras at home so I can monitor my home when I'm away. The problem is I believe that I will need to have a static IP address for the cameras. I also will need to access it from outside my LAN. The problem is my internet is set up using DHCP, so my IP address does change. Can I set it up or can I set it up in my router so certain IPs are static and the internet still uses DHCP? The one router I have is a Netgear, uh, can't remember the model number, but is an N class router. What would be the best way to do this? Okay. Thanks from So Robert. so first of all, just to kind of summarize the question a little bit so mm-hmm. that it so that it makes sense. Uh, your IP address is like your your computers and your networks, your uh, your your entire network of computers, your internet connection has an IP address. It's like a phone number. So if you're on the road mm-hmm. and you need to access those IP cameras, these are network connected surveillance cameras. You need to know that phone number, but they're on DHCP, not static. Static means the phone number never change mm-hmm. changes dynamic or DHCP means it changes every time they oh. reconnect their internet connection. So I- imagine if your phone number, you know, changed imagine if your parents' all, yeah. phone number changed <laughs> every time you hung <laughs> the up the time. phone. <laughs> then wild. try to get a hold of them. It's, yeah. it's really, really tough. So then services, Dave Maydu is suggesting dindns.org. That's a good one. Um, I use a different one, changeip.com. Hmm. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to tell you what this does. In DNS, though, uh, your router, uh, find out what dynamic DNS uh, services it supports. DIN DNS is popular, so it's probably supported. You want to get one that your router supports because what happens is when you su- subscribe to the service, which is quite often free, your IP address changes mm-hmm. and your router says, oh, the IP address has changed. Send a ping out to DIN DNS and update them. So now you get a fancy little URL like hillary.dindns.org and that becomes your phone number hmm. for your computer or your entire network. Right. Because then you branch out from your router, you log into the router firmware and you set up virtual server or servers so that each camera is then accessible at a different port. So hillary.dindns.org colon two 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 might be camera number one. Right, okay. Right, and it would bring it up, something like that. So, dindns.org. That's one. Okay, Manage DNS. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. Now, the Very one that cool. I use, I'm trying to remember their domain. I think it's changeip.com. Change IP. Yes, that's there the one. Go. It's got the simplest in- interface, and it has been in business forever. And it's mm. free, but they also offer some cool commercial packages as well for very, very cheap if you want to have, like, a .com. Hillary's Cameras .com. Oh, that'd and be easy to boom. remember. Yeah. <laughs> so that's changeip.com. But you want to make sure that your router is going to support it or that you have a computer that's on 24-7 that has whichever services client installed. Uh, all of these will work, you know, you can install software on Linux and it will automatically do the ping or whatever. So that will give you um, a static place to go to connect into your server at all times, your server, your your router. Mm-hmm. So, And then your router would dynamically set, you know, you tell it what ports go where. Cool? Groovy. Hope that helps. So two suggestions, dindns.org and changeip.com. I'll post links in the show notes for episode number 219 just to help you out. Cool. Do we have time for one more question? Yeah, sure. I think we do. Actually, this comes to us from Robert again from oh, hey, Robert. Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. Um, I have a Netgear Ready NAS NV Plus attached to my network, and I want to be able to get a list of files contained on the NAS and redirect it to a text file. Okay. Something like how you do DIR. Duh. In DOS. Yeah, DIR. yeah. And then uh, my doc, doc text, etc. In Windows, okay. um, how can this be done? I love the show. Keep up the good work, from Robert in Melbourne, Australia. Okay, so is it mount? The the question is, is it mounted to your computer? Is it a, is it again mounted through FS Tab as an SSH drive, for example? So when you boot up your computer, you have a mount point that takes you to that. Is that how it works? But uh, what you can do, like LS, is your is your command, right? I'll just mm-hmm. bring up my computer here. There we go. Sure. 
Did, did we have an answer to that? Um, I'm still waiting to All see. Right. I'm not sure. If he's in Australia, he might not be... Might not be watching live. Watching live this hour. So, like, when you type ls, it gives you a list of files, right? ls-a is list all, which gives you the, you know, more information about them. Or is it all? Pardon me. Dash all. That gives you more like a dir command would in DOS, right? So then what you do is it's the same kind of pipe. So ls-all... And then a pipe, so that tells it to save it to a file. Uh, temp slash tmp slash uh, directory dot txt. We'll just call mm -hmm. it dot txt so it's compatible with Windows. Okay? So that single pipe means it's going to overwrite the file. If you want to do a double pipe, it will append. Hit enter. Now you see it just went right back to the terminal. And now if I go, if I open that file, I was going to use nano, but let's use gedit tmp directory.txt, and there's the file. It's just like a txt file, okay, hmm. with the file list. So now you could set that up as a cron job, for example. Cron job being like a Linux version of scheduled tasks. So on your Linux computer, or perhaps you can log right into the uh, Linux terminal on the uh, on the NAS device itself if it's powered by Linux. Um, that would be another way to do it. Set that command up to automatically run every night at midnight. Overwrite the file in uh, wherever the file is located. Save it directly to one of the NAS drives. And then it's always accessible in the root folder of that drive. And it'd just be a TXT file. Of course, the, the more data you get on the drive, the larger that file's going to become. Because it's a full list if you do a recursive dash R. Right? Hoo-wee. See, that could take a while. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. A dash, capital R. Whoa. Whoa. You know, like oh, it's just going to keep going, 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 going. So that could be a big file. Yes, indeed. Cool. I hope that answers your question. I hope that's what you were looking for. Right on. And I think that's uh, that's all the time that we have tonight. You know, the show just goes right by. Time passes us by here. It's because we're having fun. And because of this mic. Bluemike.com. <laughs> Link will be in the show notes. That's Check the that Yeti out. Pro. Oh, it's pretty sweet. Beautiful mic. Yeah, and we're actually running through XLRs tonight. Mm -hmm. I know you can't see. Well, maybe you can. There you go. There you go. So there's a bit of a pro product demonstration for you. In stereo, if you're watching this on the RSS feeds, you'll be able Ooh. to uh, hear that it was in stereo tonight. <laughs> Very good. And it is, it is absolutely massive. I mean, I compared in the, in the unboxing to a Rode NT1, which I don't have access to right now, unfortunately. <laughs> but it, it is. It's huge. But it sounds great. It's a great microphone. That's so. the job. I tell mm -hmm. you. It's pretty sweet. Well, hey, it's uh, it's always a pleasure having you here. Thank you. I enjoyed being fantastic here. Fantastic having you here, Sharon Ann. Sharon Ann is still uh, backstage. If you're watching Backstage <laughs> Pass, just wave. Move <laughs> up to the camera. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we will uh, talk to you next week. Next week is going to be a lot of fun because we are going to be taking a look at... Oh, I want to show you. I'm not supposed to show you. No, top secret, Robbie. Come on. Uh, you're just going to have to wait till next... No. Can I show you? No. Oh, you can show me. Isn't you better cool? stick around for next week. Cause what does that say? I can't even. It's top secret. Just make them wait. Just oh, make them wait. Seriously? Not even a little hint. She won't let me tell you. But let me tell you, you'll never see things the same way again through your camera lens. Will you? That's your hint. It's going to be pretty <laughs> awesome. We're going to be doing a full product review on a new product. It's going to be awesome. So uh, make sure you join us next week. And it's uh, been nice having you here this week. Uh, email us live at category5.tv. Check out our website, category5.tv. And I look forward to talking to you next Tuesday night. Sounds good. We'll see you soon. Toodaloo. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.